house around the house. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fit a toilet. Like this. In this example, I'm using a corner toilet, but the basic principles are exactly the same for any ceramic toilet. Now you'll get various components with your toilet. You'll have the base pan, you'll have your cistern, and then you'll have the tank for the water that the cistern goes in. So with your kit, you should have your water tank. In this one, we've obviously got the corner shaped water tank. You'll have these screws here that go through the bottom of the tank. And you should have these two plastic parts for the cistern. First of all, take this and you've got your screw, you've got this plastic washer at the top, you've got this rubber seal there, then we've got another plastic washer and a nut. So take this, place it through the hole and ensure that the screw is located centrally. So you want your rubber washer on the inside. Then we just put the plastic washer on the outside, followed by the metal nut. And just tighten that up. Once you've done it up hand tight, just get yourself a spanner, and tighten that up. Do exactly the same with the matching part in the other hole. If you want to be extra sure you can always place a little bit of silicon sealant over the rubber washer that goes inside the water tank. I'm not going to bother because these are usually pretty good. Next we're going to place the main cistern down the middle by there. You've got this rubber washer that needs to sit on the inside and then this will screw over the thread on the outside. So place the bottom through the hole Do that up hand tight, then I'm going to use a set of these just to nip it up a little bit tighter. Again, if you're unsure about your seal, place a little bit of silicone sealant on the inside of your rubber washer. And last of all, we need to attach the float chamber, and this is the same principle. We've got a rubber washer there that needs to go on the inside, we've got the thread that goes through the other hole, and then we've got the plastic nut that we put on the outside. Once your washer is located in the hole, Tighten this up hand tight and then use a spanner whilst holding the float chamber with your hand and just tighten that up to ensure you've got a nice tight seal. And again it's up to you but you can apply some silicon sealant to the inside of the rubber washer if you want to be sure. Before we fit this into the toilet pan you then need to add another rubber washer around this nut. And that's this one which just goes over that, force it over and then that creates the seal between this and your toilet pan when you secure them together using these threads. So if you look inside you can see the cistern, the float chamber, you can just about see the two screws that we've put down through the bottom and here's the cable for your flush. In this particular example we're a bit tight for space because it's a corner unit. But when we attach this to the toilet I may have to make a few fine adjustments inside here just to ensure that this cable lines up with the button for the flush. Then we've got the button for the flush and we need to put that through the lid. It does come with this chrome piece which raises this up off the top of the lid so that it would sit up there. I want my buttons flush with the top of the lid, I don't want them raised with the chrome piece. But if I was just to put this plastic thread on there, you can see that it won't tighten it up properly because this is sticking proud through the lid. So, is what I'm going to do is use the chrome razor, I'm going to place that over there, and then going to add the plastic nut like that, and that way it allows it to get a good bite and then before you tighten it up, just make sure you've turned that so that it's bang on central and then do a final turn of that and that's it. That is now ready to connect to your flush cable. I've got it all assembled. There's a little thread there and a place for a screwdriver. So you can move this box here up and down. Now I've moved it down because you've got to have this lower by about 20 mil than the top of your overflow chamber. The idea that is this comes up and that will lock the water intake off. Now if this is too high, this will be overflowing before the cistern stops bringing water in. You don't want water constantly overflowing because your cistern will stay open and keep allowing water in. That's the kind of thing you can have a fiddle around with when it's in situ and just get it right when the water is sorted. I'm going to put this rubber seal over this nut and then when I sit the toilet down, it will sit on this nicely and we'll have the right height and we can get everything into place. Now all I've done here is literally just offered this toilet up so it's loose on the floor at the moment. I've sat the cistern into the basin with the rubber washer there and now I'm just going to tighten it down to the basin so it all lines up tight. Then once we've got it all lined up together then we can move it into place. Using our plastic washers and our wing nuts that I showed you earlier, I'll put those under the threads down here 
and we'll just tighten them up. We'll just squeeze the seal and pull the water tank and the pan together and locate them both in place. So just tighten up this wing nut, which tightens the washer onto the base of the pan, pulling the cistern tight with the pan. But once you think your toilet's lined up, it's always best to put the lid on the cistern as well and just make sure everything meets up with the wall. You may find the whole thing needs to come out a couple of mil just to get the back of this done. Now on mine, this one runs flush exactly with the wall, but I have had others in the past which need a couple of mil overhang at the back. So just bear that in mind before you go and secure it all up. I'm happy with that, and now we've got that in place, we just need to mark through the holes on the base of the toilet. I'll show you this now. Right, on this toilet, the fixing is down into the ground. So what we're going to do with this, is put a pencil down there, mark a hole that side and the other side, then I'm going to use a masonry drill bit, drill down into the floor, I'm going to put in the plugs that were supplied with the toilet, and then the bolts down into the top. So just get yourself a fairly narrow pencil, pop it down through the hole, your toilet, try and make sure it's nice and upright, turn around in a little circle, and then do the same on the other side. These are the nuts that need to be driven into the toilet, and they come with these plugs. And then we've got these little washers that your screw goes through, and that'll sit inside the hole in your toilet, so it stops the screw cracking the porcelain in your toilet when you push it in. And then over the top of that, we've got these white round caps that just sit over the screw head, and that will ensure that you can't see the screw head and should blend in with the toilet. This is a 10mm diameter drill bit I need to use for these plugs. Right, so these holes, I'm starting off with a 5.5mm drill bit, and I'm not putting on hammer action until I make a groove in the tile. And once I've got that groove and I know I'm accurate, then I can put it onto hammer action and work my way through. I'm happy with that now. Pop him on to hammer action and we'll see how we go here. We'll do exactly the same with the other one. And it's definitely a 10mm drill bit, so I'm going to go in with the 10 and get the hoover and we'll see how the plug fits. We've got our plugs now flush in the ground. You need to make sure you drill a hole deep enough to get them in. Because what you'll usually find with tiles is edge where the tile is you'll always find a bit tighter than the masonry underneath so it's all I do use a little rubber mallet so you don't damage your tiles and when they just stick in proud and you push them in as far as you can by hand just get your mallet like that just give them a gentle tap in and you'll find this bit's nice and tight around the edge and the other bit should squeeze out when you screw the screw into the hole we need to take our flexible connector and get it into the wall so literally take the end of your connector, the rubber seal, and push it into the soil pipe. Then I'm just going to push a bit of push fit pipe into my isolation valve for the system, cut the pipe to length, and that will be ready in place to attach to my system. So here we go, with my fit in, in place, ready for the system. We'll take the bag off there now, I've only got that on because of the smell. We'll put the toilet into place, we'll get everything connected up. So we'll put this flexible pipe onto the back of the toilet. Once that's on secure, we can push it into place, allowing the flexible fitting to compress. If we just look here, there should be more or less bang on for me to connect the system up. Using the screws provided, push those through this little plastic washer into the plugs that we put in earlier, drive these screws in, and then once they're in, we'll put this plastic cap over the top of the screw head. Pop your plastic cap over the top. Then down here, we release the valve, let the water into the cistern. And you should get something like that. And when it gets to the right height, that will lift up this float and lock it off. If you turn the lid upside down, the bottom of your button has this bit here, and we just click that into the flush mechanism. Most systems have a similar flush mechanism like this. Some just clip in and push straight down onto the system. If you have a cable like this, you usually just pop those into there and just clip them into place. And that's it. 
Right, with all toilet seats, they come with various designs, so just follow the instructions, they're usually fairly simple. On this example, we've got a metal plate with a rubber washer below that sits on top of the toilet. You've got these two posts stick up there and there. There's then a small groove on the top, which I'll show you how they work now. You've got a screw that just goes straight down through the hole in the toilet. This rubber part underneath the toilet pushes through the hole. When you tighten the screw up, it expands inside the hole. And then there's a metal thread down the middle, which allows your screw to go through and tighten up. Then back to the top, these metal plates just go over the top to cover up the details underneath, make it look a bit neater. And then you just get the toilet seat and push that on top. Now if we look at the base of the toilet seat, you just want to then locate up this hole and this hole over the two metal bars on the toilet, like so. Then holding the button in, Push your toilet seat down like that and it'll secure into place. If you ever want to take the toilet lid off again, just hold this button in and lift this lid off like that. And then you've got access to the brackets again. Once that's done, you just want to check your system. Make sure it's all working. And it tops back up. Check for any leaks. I'll check mine, I had one or two. I'm about to tighten a few screws up. I've checked underneath the soil pipe. Everything seems to be good. I'm going to put a nice bead of sealant around the base of this just to make sure it's nice and tight to the floor and secure and that no debris can get underneath and it looks nice and neat and finishes it off. So there we go. That's how to fit a toilet. For more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pies Around the House. Ta-ta! Farewell!